everyone, welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. Today's tutorial is for the quick and fun zipper pouch from Sewn Ideas. So this adorable zipper pouch comes together so much easier than you think it will. I mean, honestly, when I first looked at the pattern, especially the image on the pattern, I thought, I don't, think, I don't know how that's quick. I don't see how it's quick. I mean, fun, yeah, but quick, I don't know. It actually does come together very quickly. It's very easy. I think you're gonna really love this pouch. This is a great little pouch to have in your purse to just carry with you when you're on the go. So the things I really love about this pouch are these little accents we have everywhere. We have one side where you can keep it very simple like I did and then put your bag tag there. And then another side where you can highlight some super fun fabric you have. And then you have the strip up top which you can change between these fabrics. You can use the same type of fabric like I did. And then on the back, we have this beautiful big panel. Now you can see in this pouch here, I actually used a fabric panel from Backstitch Fabrics. So this is like a bigger design that's just on one big cut of fabric. These can be a little bit tricky for bag makers and figuring out what to do with them, but I love them personally. And this was the perfect little size for this pouch. Such a fun little bag. So you see on the front, we have this nice little zipper here. So this is just like a little front zip pocket. On the top, we have the main zipper, open it up. We don't have any pockets or anything in the lining in this pattern. You are more than welcome to add them, but that's kind of what makes this a little bit more quick is we don't have like a lot of stuff we have to add. We have just enough stuff to make this bag look super cute, be super functional, but also something that's not gonna take an entire day to make. So Vivi over at Sewn Ideas is granting us a coupon code for this pattern. I will have that down in the description of this video. Just note, it does have an expiration date. So if you're interested in getting this pattern for a deal, make sure you check down in the description of this video. This pattern does have a few optional parts. It has like an optional label, which I'm not gonna be showing you today. It also has an optional wrist strap, but I will be showing you that. I will be showing you how to make the wrist strap. It's a little bit different than wrist straps we've made in the past, so I'm really interested to see how that comes together. If you're not already a subscriber to the channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything you wanna say, leave them down in the comments section. Check out the comment section because at the very top of it will be a pinned comment from me with all of the steps for this tutorial. So if there's just one spot you're interested in, go ahead and click on that number and I'll take you straight there in the video. All right, let's get started. So this is a fantastic scrappy pouch. You can make every single piece a different piece of fabric. I love it, it does not require a lot of stuff. For your outer fabric, you're going to need one fat quarter. I'm using this beautiful little fruity fabric right here. For your lining, you're going to need another fat quarter, so I have this fun poppy print for that. And then for your contrast fabric, you're gonna want another fat quarter. Now for my contrast fabric today, I'm actually using this faux leather vinyl that I got from Emmeline Bags. For your interfacing, you really just want some woven interfacing that's a little bit lightweight and some fusible fleece. So I'm using this beautiful woven fuse from God Interfacing. You're gonna want about one yard of that. And then I'm also using this fusible fleece, which is a fusible fleece thermalam, and you're gonna need a fat quarter of that. I suggest just getting a yard just so you have it on hand. Here are some of the other things you're gonna need for this bag. Since we're making the wrist strap, you need a one inch swivel hook and a three quarter inch D ring. I'll be using some of these beautiful rivets from Emmeline Bags on the wrist strap. You're gonna also need two zippers that are 11 inches. Since I'm using zipper tape, I'm actually gonna cut them just a little bit bigger, probably about 12 to 13 inches each. And if you have any sort of handmade or custom made bag label, you're gonna want that as well. This looks really, really nice on this pouch. If you're interested in how I had these metal bag tags made, check the description of this video. I have a post over on my Patreon page where I go over all the ins and outs of how these were custom made for me. Next, we have all the other stuff. Now these are just items that I use almost every single time I sew. First, some good fabric scissors. These are Kai scissors. I got them on Amazon, I love them. A small one inch by six inch ruler is incredibly handy when making any sort of bags, especially the small ones. I'm using this Mara 100 thread today. This is polyester thread and it works really well on bags. You don't really have as many skip stitches as you would if you were using cotton thread. Double sided tape, this is just Dritz quarter inch double sided tape. I like to use Microtex 8012 needles. I have my Beacon 3-in-1 glue. This is just gonna help if I have anything that's a little challenging to keep together. I'm just gonna glue it together. My trusty little stiletto seam ripper over here, a chalk pencil for marking on dark fabric, and then an air erasing marker for marking on lighter fabrics and in the seam allowance. 
So here are all of our pattern pieces that I will be using today. There are a few extra pattern pieces for that custom made label, but I'm not going to be making that today. First, the main body. So from your outer fabric, now this can be your contrast or your cotton woven, whatever you want for the back of the bag, you're going to need one cut of that and then two cuts from your lining. You're also going to have two cuts of your fusible fleece using this pattern piece. Next, we have the zipper pocket. Now this can be cut from your lining or your outer fabric, whatever you want, honestly. It, it probably should be the lining, but I, I use my outer fabric. So this is the zipper pocket that goes in the front of the bag. Next, you have these two pieces that are gonna make up the front of your bag. So one is your outer fabric and one is your contrast fabric. You're gonna also need your outer top front. This is gonna be that strip that runs right along the top of that contrast front. So if you wanna make this totally different, feel free to do that. And then you're gonna have a zipper strap. Now this is just to help you install your zipper on the front of the bag. It's really not seen, so I don't really think it matters which fabric you use for this piece right here. And then down here, we have three optional pieces. This is just for if you're gonna add the wristlet strap. As you can see on this first bag, I did not add the wristlet strap and it's adorable without it. So if you're not in the mood for a strap today, this is optional. But if you are gonna be making the strap, you're gonna need one large cut from your contrasting fabric and then a skinnier cut from your outer fabric, as well as a cut for the D-ring strap. Every single piece of quilt cotton that I've used today is interfaced with my woven interfacing. So for me, that's the woven fuse, except the zipper strap and the zipper tab. These two pieces of fabric are best if they're not interfaced with anything. We want them to be pretty thin and loose. It's gonna help us use them in the pattern. So first let's take a look at our outer left and outer right front panels. Now this is what gives that front of the bag a really cute look. If you have any sort of custom label, handmade label, anything like that you wanna attach, now's a good time to think about how you're gonna do that. So I am going to be attaching my metal bag tag on the contrast side because it's less busy. It'll stand out more over here and bring attention to the fabric on this side more as well. So you can decide exactly where you wanna place your bag label. Just remember that this bottom strip right here is going to be boxed. So this bottom strip right here is gonna be folded over when you're trying to center this all in. I like to go in two and three quarters of an inch from the right side or from the outer side if you're working on the other panel and then three inches from the bottom. So I'm just gonna mark a little dot right there and that will be my center point for this block. I'm then gonna grab my washer and I'm just gonna center it on that dot and then I'm going to mark in the slits where my prongs will go. I'm also gonna grab a scrap piece of fusible fleece and mark the prong spots on this as well. This helps to beef up the fabric a little bit so that we don't have to worry about those prongs ripping it as we use it. So now grab your seam ripper and I suggest ripping a slit that is not as long as your marks. It's better for this to be a little tight than too loose. So I'm just gonna be very gentle and mark a very, very small slit. There we go. Do the same on your fusible fleece. And then I'm just gonna take my bag label and poke up the prongs just like this. Insert them into those slits. There we go. And then I'm going to insert my fusible fleece over the prongs. And finally, I'll take my washer and put my washer over the prongs and then spread the prongs open. And there we go, now I have my bag label attached. It's very simple. Now, normally I would also put fusible fleece over the back of these prongs, but we will be attaching a fusible fleece cut to the back of this entire front panel in just a few moments, so I can leave this for now. Now, line up your left and right panels so that the notches are on the outer edges and then fold them right sides together. They should match up exactly. You can clip along this edge. And now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have that edge sewn, you can go ahead and press this open. It says to press it towards the left side, but just press it towards the side with the thinner fabric. So if you have vinyl and quilt cotton, press it towards the easier side. So we're gonna press that seam allowance just like that. If you can press this with an iron, go ahead. Otherwise, we're just gonna take this back to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch over this pressed edge, so over the side that has the seam allowance behind it, at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, only on that side. So once we have that top stitch, grab your zipper strap piece and lay that right side down, lining up the long edge and those short little nubs that go up, just like that. If it overextends just a little bit, that's fine. 
So now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew along these three edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have this piece sewn on, grab some scissors and just cut right into the corner towards the stitches, but don't cut the stitches. You just, you wanna get very, very close, but you don't wanna actually cut the stitches. Now what you're gonna do is take that little zipper strap and push it so that they're wrong sides together. So you kinda have to manipulate it over here in the corner. Now, pressing this is going to help, except on the vinyl, because we don't wanna press the vinyl. So I suggest going around the entire three edges and finger press it really well. If you have a vinyl side, just clip it for now. I'm gonna go ahead and clip the quilt cotton side as well, but then I'll press it after I have it clipped. Okay, so I'm just gonna unclip my cotton woven side. By clipping it once and finger pressing, it actually is gonna hold it pretty well. And now I'm just gonna grab my iron and iron over that edge and not touch the vinyl. Today I'm ironing with a Rowenta Focus. I'm kind of testing out a bunch of irons right now. And so far I can say I really like that iron, so. All right, so now that we have the quill cotton side pressed, let's go ahead and just kind of see what we can do about the vinyl side. Because we really want this to stay in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my Beacon 3-in-1 glue and I'm just going to apply a very thin bead of glue, so just a little tiny line of glue, on the seam of the vinyl. And then I'm gonna push it back, wrong sides together, just like we had it previously, and I'm gonna reattach my clips. And what this is hopefully gonna do is it, it's going to hold it in place so that when we need to work with this in the next step, it won't come up. We'll see, we'll see. I haven't tried this yet, but I'm gonna do the short little edge over here as well. All right, so now we're gonna just put this to the side, let that glue dry and work on our zipper. Okay, so now you're gonna grab your zipper pocket. Funny thing here is this is not a square, but it's very, very close to a square. So you're gonna wanna mark the top longer edge. So I'm just gonna put a little T right at the top here so I remember that this, this edge right here is my top. It is longer than the sides by just a tiny bit. But you want the top edge up on the top. Now I'm gonna grab my zipper tape and I'm gonna cut off a piece of zipper tape that is 12 inches long. That should be enough. I get my zipper tape from Sally Tomato and it comes with these beautiful pulls, so I'm just gonna use those today. All right, now my zipper pull is attached with the top of our pocket up away from us towards the top of our table, take your zipper and lay it right side up and lay your lining pocket right side up. Now, lay your zipper tape on the bottom edge. It should overhang the sides quite a bit. That's perfectly fine. And then I'm just gonna clip it in place. And now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and baste along this bottom edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have this basted on, grab that accent front panel and let's remove our clips and hope that glue holds. It's looking like it's actually doing a pretty good job. I just realized I put my zipper on the wrong way. <laughs> when your zipper closes, you want it to go towards the left, not towards the right. It is what it is. So now take your front accent panel and lay it so that it runs along the bottom edge of your zipper. And then if you fold up the sides a little bit, these sides of your zipper tape should line up with the sides of your pocket. Now ideally, the top of your front panel is gonna come up to meet the other edge of your zipper tape. However, since my zipper tape is a little bit wide, it's just a bit short. Now that's okay, but I'm gonna get this up as close to the zipper teeth as I can, and then just clip this in place. And if you want, you are more than welcome to add some double-sided sticky tape along this bottom edge of your zipper to hold everything together. I'll go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna put on my double-sided sticky tape, remove the paper, and then just fold that front panel back down just so it doesn't move around on you at the sewing machine. So now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along this bottom edge only at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Don't sew along these top edges, just the bottom edge. If your zipper tape overhangs the sides quite a bit, 
to make it a little bit easier, you can move that zipper pull out of the way. Just if you're using zipper tape, be careful not to accidentally let that zipper fly off. There we go. And that way we can get nice and close to these teeth without having to worry about any wonky, wavy stitches because the zipper pulls in the way. Okay, once you have that bottom stitched on, go ahead and move your zipper pull to the middle. Now I just give it a little test to make sure I didn't stitch too close to the teeth, but we look like we're good, except my zipper pulls on the wrong side. All right, once you're done, if you wanna go to the sewing machine and just sew over your zipper teeth that are open. Now, this is only if you have plastic zippers, but if you have a plastic zipper, you can pinch together your zipper teeth so that it stays nice and tight and closed. It doesn't open up while you're working with it and just baste over these teeth just to hold it in place. So now take your unit and fold it right side down. So we're looking at the wrong side now. You're gonna take this pocket and pull it all the way down. If you'd like, you can press this with your iron, but a finger press works as well. And then take the bottom of your pocket and line it up with that top edge of your zipper tape, making sure you're lining up the edges of the pocket with the other side of your pocket. So I just pull it all the way up, lining up one side, lining it up with the top of our zipper tape, and then clip, do the same on the other side, and then just clip along this entire top edge. Now what I'm gonna do real quick is just baste this on at the sewing machine at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have that basted on now, just turn it so it's right side up. And what we wanna do is just top stitch over the shorter edges now. So the top stitching should go through that front panel, the zipper tape, and the pocket on the back. We're just gonna top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance on both sides. So once you have those side seams top stitched, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lift up the front of your panel so it exposes everything beneath it and we're just gonna fold that out of the way. You can pin to keep it out of the way. And what we wanna do is sew along this edge, sewing over the zipper tape, sewing over the backing of the zipper and the pocket, right along this edge. It can be about a quarter of an inch away from this edge just to close everything up. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So if you want, you can just flip this up now and then clip the top and clip the bottom. There we go. So now I'm gonna sew along both of these sides a quarter of an inch away from the fold. Make sure you backstitch well at the top and the bottom. So now we have the sides sewn down. Grab your scissors and then cut about a quarter of an inch away on the outer edge of your seam just to remove all this excess. You don't have to be totally exact about how far it is from this edge. and it, None of this is seen. You just don't want it overhanging like that because we don't want that in the way. Now, if you'd like, you can go ahead and press this with your iron so that it's nice and flat. Next, grab that outer top front panel and lay it right side down, right along the top of your zipper tape. All right, once you have this top flap pinned in place, we're gonna sew along this clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have that top flap stitched on, you can press it up with the seam behind the top flap. And then if you can, you can go ahead and press that top seam just to get it nice and flat. If you're using vinyl here, just be very careful. And you don't have to press this. You can just finger press it and still top stitch it at the machine. All right, now let's take this to the sewing machine and top stitch along this top edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Look at how stinking cute this front panel is. So that really is the majority of the work in this pattern is just building this front panel. The rest is pretty smooth sailing. Go ahead and put this to the side. So if you're adding the wristlet strap, go ahead and follow along. Otherwise you can skip to the next step. Grab your D-ring strap and lay it wrong side up. Fold wrong sides together and then press along that folded edge. Open it back up and then fold the parallel raw edges up to meet that fold and give it a press once again. And then just fold the entire unit in half so that all the long raw edges are hiding inside of that little hot dog bun. Now we'll take this to the sewing machine and top stitch along both of the long edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have the strap top stitch, grab your D-ring and just slide the D-ring over, fold your strap around it and clip the end of it. What you can do now is just measure one inch from this top fold down and then what I'm gonna do is just mark lines like this 
And now take this to the sewing machine and just stitch over that marked line. The line is one inch from the top edge of your fold on your D-ring strap. After you've stitched along that line, you can just pretty much cut the excess in half so that you have a little bit of a seam left, but not a very long one. Now grab your front outer panel and you're going to attach your D-ring strap. Now ideally, your D-ring strap is going to be attached on the same side as your zipper pull when closed. My zipper pull when closed is on the right. It should have been on the left. So you know what, I'm just gonna stick with this and I'm going to attach my D-ring strap three quarters of an inch from the top edge on the right side since that is where my zipper pull is. It's totally your preference where you attach all of this stuff. So three quarters of an inch from the top. Attach your D-ring strap so the D-ring is pointing into the middle of the bag and then clip in place. I'm just gonna go base this on at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, now that the front panel is all ready to go, what we can do is attach our fusible fleece. Now, depending on what you're using, this can be a little challenging. Since I have this vinyl for my back, I obviously don't wanna iron it on the front. So I'm going to attach my fusible fleece so that it's the glue side, the rough side down against the back of my back panel. I'm gonna grab a scrap piece of fabric and just lay it over the top of the fusible fleece I'm gonna grab my iron and I'm just going to iron on that fusible fleece using a good amount of steam and hopefully that will help the glue adhere. With fusible fleece, I really prefer to iron from the right side of the fabric. I find that that helps the glue stick the best, but since we're using vinyl, we really don't wanna do that. So if your fusible fleece is just not sticking, like mine is, because I just can't get enough heat on it what you can do is just grab some of your glue and glue along the edges and that will help hold it in place. We're going to stitch this all together in a little bit. Another option is to actually apply the fusible fleece to the lining panels instead. You could also baste on the fusible fleece at the sewing machine, just sewing along the edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Really, whatever is easiest for you. If you're using quilt cotton, then just iron this on. It's very, very easy to iron on with quilt cotton. If you're using vinyl, use some glue or baste it on at the sewing machine. All right, once you have your fusible fleece attached to the back panel, go ahead and set this to the side. Now grab your front panel and we're gonna do the same thing. Just flip it over so it's wrong side up. Grab your fusible fleece and lay it over the back. And again, this one can be even more difficult because if you have the bulk from the D-ring, it might be best to just glue or baste this on. So for this panel, I'm actually going to base this on at the sewing machine. I'm just gonna baste it on using a large stitch, like five millimeters and an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around. Okay, once you have your fusible fleece attached, go ahead and set these to the side. Now let's prep our remaining zipper. I'm gonna cut this one down to 12 inches again. All right, now grab your zipper tape and open up the end that will be open when you open your zipper. So you see when you close it, this end will close, open. Take your open end. So I'm gonna measure down about three quarters of an inch from one of the top open edges and mark right on the edge of my zipper. Do the same on the other side, about three quarters of an inch. Now, pinch the zipper tape wrong sides together right on that three quarter of an inch mark and then let the zipper tape just fold up and away from the center of the zipper, just like this. So you see it's just folded nice and clean do the same on the other side, so I'm just gonna pinch them wrong sides together. And then my zipper tape naturally wants to fold up and to the left. I'm gonna let it do that so that it's going at a 90 degree angle. And now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and just baste down along these edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance to hold these folds in place. Now grab your zipper tab and lay it right side down and fold it wrong sides together so two raw edges will meet. Just find that midpoint like that. Open it back up, take the parallel raw edges and fold them up to meet that midpoint fold. There you go. Do the same on both sides and then fold the whole unit in half so you're hiding those long raw edges. Next, grab your zipper tape and measure nine inches from that fold that you basted down. So once you have nine inches marked away from that folded edge of your zipper, just cut along that mark, and then grab that itty bitty zipper tab and just wrap it around that raw edge of your zipper that you just cut. 
and clip it in place. It should overhang on the sides just a little bit. Now we'll take this to the sewing machine and top stitch along the interior folds at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So if your zipper tape overhangs just a little bit, you can trim it down so that it's just one nice clean zipper line. So now grab one of your lining pieces. The instructions are gonna have you lay your zipper tape right side up on the right side of the lining piece with the zipper when closed on the right side. Now, this is set up so that both of these zippers when closed are on the same side. But remember, I mixed mine up a little bit. <laughs> I put my zipper over on the wrong side. So if I wanted to keep it so that all of my zippers when closed were on the right side, I would actually switch this around in the pattern so that the zipper when closed on the lining is on the left side. I don't really mind them being in opposite directions and to avoid confusion, I'm going to follow the pattern. However, I just wanted you to know that, that if you make the mistake that I did, but you wanna keep all the zippers on the same side, you just need to make sure you make that mistake again later in the pattern. So the easiest way for me to do this is to find the midpoint of both the lining panel and the zipper. So I'm just gonna fold my zipper in half and then I'm gonna use my scissors and just trim the tiniest little triangle right on that half crease on both sides. So you can see when I open it up, I have these little notches. I'm gonna do the same thing on the top edge of my lining panel. So I'm just gonna fold it in half and then a tiny, tiny clip on that fold. And there we go. So now I'm gonna take my zipper right side up and my lining right side up and match up the midpoint marks. And then I'll just clip this zipper to that top edge of the lining. Now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine real quick and just baste this down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that zipper basted on, grab your front outer panel and lay that right side down and line up that top edge. I like to clip along the side edges as well just to help keep everything straight. So now we have the exterior front wrong side up, the zipper right side up and the lining right side up. Let's take this to the sewing machine and sew along this top clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. So now if you have any overhang from your zipper tape, go ahead and trim that down. Pull your exterior and lining panels so that they are wrong sides together. So I like to just match them up along those bottom boxed edges first. And then I can kind of pull along the zipper up top to line up the top edge and get it nice and straight. Now if you'd like, you can press this with your iron to just hold it in place before we top stitch it. You can see what I'm saying with my zippers go in the opposite direction since I messed this up. Like I said, all you had to do was switch this around from what the pattern said, and then they would have been in the same direction, just both on the right instead of the left. So now we're gonna take this back to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along this top edge right here, but only where the zipper tape is. So leave the sides unstitched. We only want to top stitch where the zipper tape is. Once you have this top stitched, you can grab your last lining panel and let's go ahead and find the midpoint on that top edge. Lay your lining panel right side up. Take your unit with the zipper and lay it right side up, matching up those midpoint marks. Now I'm just gonna quickly baste along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that basted on, you can just grab your back panel now and lay it right side down and line it up with that top edge. All right, now let's take this to the sewing machine and sew along that top clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have these stitched together, you can trim down that zipper tape. Now fold the lining and the exterior panels wrong sides together. I like to close the zipper first, it helps. And then I'm going to tug and line up my boxed edges with the panels wrong sides together. And then what I do is I just kind of pull along that zipper to get it nice and straight. And I can press on the lining side, but I can't press on the front. So I'm just gonna press this down a bit on the lining side to help hold it in place. All right, now we can take this to the sewing machine and top stitch along this back panel at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure once again, you're not going all the way to the edges, you're only top stitching where your zipper tape is. All right, now all we have to do is sew the pouch together. So open up your zipper about three quarters of the way 
and then pull up your outer panels and pull them right sides together and pull your lining panels right sides together. First, you're gonna wanna match up your side seams. So those are the seams between your lining and your exterior panel. Match those up and you can fold that seam towards the exterior panel or you can just fold the seam open. Once I have those side seams clipped, I then go down to my box corners and clip my box corners together. And then for the exterior side, I'll just go along all three edges and clip the exterior panels right sides together. All right, we can do the same thing on the lining side, just clipping our lining panels right sides together and matching up all of the edges. So now once again, make sure that your zipper in the center is about halfway to three quarters of a way open. Grab a ruler and we're gonna mark a seven inch opening along the bottom edge of the lining panel. So it's a pretty big opening, but you're gonna wanna use that for turning later. So just center it and mark seven inches. So now I'm gonna start at one of my marks and sew along the edge at a half of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to be sewing my lining at a half of an inch seam allowance until I get up towards the seam that connects the lining and the exterior panels. Once I get close to that seam on the lining side, I'm going to decrease my seam allowance to a quarter of an inch. So I wanna be at a quarter of an inch seam allowance when I get to the seam between the exterior and the lining panels. And then I'll continue sewing my exterior at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then once I get to my lining, I'll increase it to a half of an inch seam allowance. When you're sewing over the sides here, feel for that zipper tab and make sure you don't sew over the zipper tab. The zipper tab needs to be untouched by the needle. So if you need to, just feel it out really well. I do like to sew with a zipper foot here because that allows me to get really close to that zipper tab but not actually sew over it. If you have a D-ring strap, feel for that and make sure you go over it a couple times, like backstitch over it just to really hold it in place. And last, do not sew these corners. We wanna keep these corners open. So once you get to that corner, just backstitch along the straight edges, but don't sew on these corners themselves. So if you added a D-ring strap like I did, it's a good idea to kind of cut that down a little bit to remove some bulk. So if you basted it down, you'll wanna remove those basting stitches. And we really just cut it down by about an eighth of an inch. So you can see I pulled back the lining and the exterior panels. And I'll just very gently cut down the bulk just a tiny bit. Now she suggests going around the entire unit one more time with another row of stitches just outside that first row of stitches. If you're using vinyl like I am, that's a really good idea, especially for the exterior panel. So I am just gonna go one more row on the sides and the bottom of my exterior panel, just right next to the row of stitches, but towards the seam. All right, once we have all the sides stitched down, what we're gonna do now is we're going to box our corners. So starting on the lining side, you're going to pull those corners of your fabric away from one another so that the seams come right up against each other. Fold the seams in opposite direction and you should have a nice flat edge right here. It's a very, very small box corner, so it really shouldn't give you too much trouble. Do both of the corners on your lining like this. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing with the exterior. I find it easier to pull along the sides to help get that corner real flat. So you might have to insert your hand into the center of your bag and kind of push out like that. Just to push out these sides, and give it a good tug. And then just again, make sure that your seams are folded in opposite directions. If you're having a hard time with bulky seams, you can also open the seams and then just press both of them so that they're open. Just try your best to make this as easy as possible. The more vinyl you're using in this bag, the thicker those seams are gonna be, so 
Just do your best. And again, you see I tug down lower to help straighten that out. I find if you just try to focus up here, it can round a little bit. So if you tug down here, that really separates the fabric so that you can straighten out this top edge. All right, now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and sew along these four corners at a quarter inch seam allowance. On my exterior corners, I'm gonna do a second row of stitching just to really hold that vinyl in place. Okay, once you have all four corners boxed and ready to go, now we just have to turn this right side out. It shouldn't really give you much trouble. Use your hand to poke out those box corners. And then also get in there and poke out your zipper tab and your D-ring. There we go. And that is looking so cute. So I'm just gonna push the lining in to take a look at it real quick. That is a really, really cute bag. Okay. So now all we have to do is close up the lining. So pull your lining out and try to straighten out that bottom edge and push out those corners. All I do is just give a little tug on the edges and you can see the lining folds down on itself. So I'm just going to tug it and help it fold down. You could measure this to make sure it's a perfect half of an inch folded, but it's not a big deal if it's not perfect. You just wanna make sure that it's closed. So now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Your bag is now done. If you're not doing the wristlet strap, then you are completely done with the pattern. If you are doing the wristlet strap, let's go ahead and finish that up. So this is the first time I'm trying this strap, so bear with me. So I'm gonna take my fabric strap for the wristlet and fold it wrong sides together along the long edge and press with my iron. This is a very skinny piece of fabric so it can be a little bit difficult finding that midpoint with your ruler. And now I'm gonna open it back up and then take the parallel long raw edges, fold them up to meet that midpoint line and press. I know this is very, very skinny. So I use woven interfacing for this part. I actually think if you interface the strap with craft fuse, that might be a little bit easier because craft fuse when warm is very gooey but when it dries, it's like paper, and I think that would hold this together really well. So if I did this again, I would use craft fuse on the fabric portion of the strap. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip it over and press it from the other edge as well with some steam. So now grab your double-sided tape, and it should be 13 inches long with overhang on the sides, so the tape shouldn't go all the way to the short edges of your fabric strip and just run it right along the back, so right over those raw edges, all the way down until you're about a half of an inch from the other edge. All right, so now I have my tape adhered to the back of my fabric portion of my wristlet strap. Now grab the contrasting piece of fabric, so for me it's that faux vinyl, and lay it right side up. And we're gonna measure one and a quarter inch from one of the long edges up towards the middle Use chalk for this. All right, it's very, very hard to see that line with this chalk, but it's there. And now take your fabric strap, remove that paper backing from the double-sided tape, and then place it right on the drawn line. There we go. So now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along the two long edges of the fabric strap at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So you are sewing through the fabric strap, which is double-folded, and through your contrast fabric. Don't fold anything on the contrast fabric yet. All right, so now what we wanna do is fold the vinyl part of our strap. So you can turn this wrong side up, measure two inches in from one of the long sides, and on the wrong side of the strap, mark the midpoint line. If you're using cool cotton here, you can press this with an iron. Otherwise, we're gonna be using some clips to hold this all together. So now fold the long raw edge, wrong sides together up to meet that line. And let's just add some clips here to hold it in place. Do the same on the other side. And once you have both edges folded in, now all we have to do is fold this in half. So you can see the fabric part of my strap is not centered 
on my vinyl part. And I think that's because when I taped it down this fabric part, I put it right over that one and a quarter inch drawn line. And I think what I needed to do was just put one edge against that line and not centered on that line so that this will end up straighter. Like I said, I haven't tried this before, so we learn together. So once you have the edges clipped, grab your swivel hook. So this is that one inch swivel hook and let's add this to our strap. Make sure the swivel part is facing on the same side as the fabric part of your strap. That would be considered the right side of the strap. And I'm just going to unclip and reclip to get this kind of in the center. There we go. So now unclip the short edges and we're going to take these short edges and unfold them and bring them up right sides together. Now line them up along that short edge and clip in place. Now we can take this to the sewing machine and sew along the short clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. So once you have that short edge sewn together, I like to just finger press that seam allowance open and then refold my strap. So now just refold the whole strap so you have this like little loop here with no raw edges anywhere. Okay, now that we're done, we can take this to the sewing machine and top stitch along both of the folded edges of our strap just to hold everything in place. When I'm top stitching, I like the right side, so the side with the fabric, to be inside. That way it's up and I can just top stitch along the edge just like this on both sides. So once you have your wrist strap top stitched, you're going to take your swivel hook and slide it down to where that seam is connecting the two short ends. And we're going to just fold them together. So the seam should be on one side and then it should be nice and even on the other side. Use some clips to help hold this in place if it helps. Now you can take this to the sewing machine and just top stitch right against the swivel hook to hold this in place so that the swivel hook doesn't you know, move around too much on the wristlet strap. Or if you have rivets and a rivet press, you can just add a rivet here and it's a nice decorative feature. So that's what I'm gonna do. So this can get very, very bulky. What I'm gonna do is just try to go a little bit further down from that seam. And I'm just going to mark in the center right underneath that seam. And now I'm gonna use my two and a half millimeter die to punch out a hole where that spot is. And then I'm gonna grab one of my rivets and I'm just going to push it in. And you should be able to snap it in place. There we go. And now I'm gonna switch out my dies. And I have my 10 millimeter die that I'm gonna install in my rivet press. And now I'm just going to push down on those rivets to set them. Now, isn't that a sweet little wristlet strap? That's just beautiful, I love that. All right, are you ready? It's so cute! Oh, I love this pattern. You know I love almost all the patterns, but I especially love Sewn ID Outs patterns. Vivi does such a good job of making these really cool looking bags that are very simple to put together. This is such a sweet one. Yes, my zippers are going in opposite directions. I'm okay with it, but it's always good if they're going in the same direction, preferably over there. <laughs> But you can see we have this beautiful little zip pocket up front. Open it up, ba-bam. Beautiful, beautiful logo. Like I said, I do have a link down in the description of the video explaining exactly how I had this made, who I contacted, how much it cost, how long it took, all of that information. There's a link down for it in the description of this video. On the back, I just used that beautiful faux leather vinyl. Oh, it's so soft. So I think that you are going to love this pattern. I think that this is a great gift, especially as we start approaching the holidays. I know some of us are trying to get ahead of the gift giving. This would be a great gift, a great easy sew, especially for a lot of the younger people in your life. But it's also great for any of us who have bigger bags with a lot of things in them. This is just the bare minimums. You know, the lip gloss, the cell phone, the credit card, a little bit of cash, things like that. And then with the wristlet strap is something that you can just kind of take on the go when you don't want to take the big bag. So always a big fan of zipper pouches, always a fan of the wristlets. 
So I hope this video inspires you to go out and make a quick and fun zipper pouch. I think you're gonna love it. Don't forget to use the discount code if it's still available. All that information is in the description of this video. Thank you so much for sewing with me today. I hope you have a great day and a great rest of the week. Get out there and make something. Bye.